All right. Good afternoon, everybody. It is four o'clock. I will call uh, the City Plan Commission meeting to order. I'll call the roll. Alder Trey Mitchell. Here. Kim. Here. Jerry. Here. Marilyn. Here. City Engineer Ryan Sasma. Here. All right. If you're able, please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. Any potential conflicts of interest today? I um, will not be participating in the rezones and comprehen comprehensive plan designations before you today. I'm a property owner and I've written a letter uh, that's in your packet, so I will not be participating in that and Chad will be do uh, handling that aspect today. All right, thank you, Steve. All right, next item, approval of the minutes from our last meeting. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Motion second, any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from our last meeting, state aye. Aye. Any objection? Share votes aye. Minutes are approved. All right, we've got a few items on the agenda today, so bear with us, folks. Appreciate it. Um, first item, number five, application for conditional use. Uh, sign permit with exceptions by the Sheboygan Area School District. Install a new video scoreboard at North High School. Steve? Thanks, Mayor. Um, Joel Vollmer is here from the Sheboygan Area School District and what we're taking a look at is um, the scoreboard at Sheboygan North High is pretty much a manual scoreboard. It gives you the scores, the yards, the ball, you know, uh, time, different things of that. Um, there's an opportunity for North to switch some of that scoreboard to a video scoreboard, which would then, if you take a look and see some of the uh, uh, drawings before you, it gives not only the scoring mode, but also a video mode of um, whether it's plays or different action and crowd and different things of that nature. So they're looking to uh, create um, this video component on the scoreboard. It would allow for students to develop multimedia productions. Um, they feel it wouldn't have any impact to the adjoining neighborhoods. They, there's a photo that shows some distances, this one right here, um, where to residences and it's, and it's uh, um, well um, out of the range so that should be fine from that perspective. The board is approximately 380 square feet. It's 27 feet tall, which is what it is now. So it's, it's pretty much the same thing other than add in that video component. The one thing that the plan commission may want to have the applicant address is just, um, they mentioned the aspect of the provide flexibility to use it for multiple sports and events. Um, you know, with that new video scoreboard, is this on during off nights when there are no sports, um, during the off season at night? Is, uh, you know, who is going to be advertising? Is it strictly just for um, North High events? Um, was there the aspects or thought of businesses? Those would be the questions that we may want to um, have the applicant address. And there is one exception, and that's to, because the scoreboard is 380 square feet, so they are asking for an exception of that. Staff does not object to the proposal, and uh, I can answer any questions, and the applicant's here as well. Any Anything else you'd like to add? <laughs> you really covered it. Yeah. So you pretty much read it word for word. So I guess uh, the big thing that I want to promote uh, with this is the, the video board. Um, there's a lot that goes into running this scoreboard, uh, a system like this. Uh, North High is going to be creating some curriculum for the media production uh, to teach students basically how to program and operate the video uh, scoreboard system. Uh, this will provide real world hands on experience for the students that are possibly interested in pursuing production uh, as a career in their future. So um, that's a huge part of, of this video board. Mm -hmm. So, like I said, Steve really covered a lot of the points that I was going to cover. Jerry? Just as a follow-up uh, regarding timing, is it going to be on all day, all night? Oh, uh, no, what are no the it'll hours? just be during game events. Okay, and no, is, are there any outside advertisers allowed or just school events? Uh, I was informed that that is not an option, so we will not be doing that. Okay. Um, during the school, if there was some event, uh, you know, sponsored by the, uh, the whatever club and that sort of stuff, we would uh, maybe flash that on there if it was real simple stuff, but school-related. Gotcha. Right? 
Nope, Paul, that has to stay open. It's open to me. Got, Sorry. Yeah. We got to leave that open. Oh, you got one? Yeah, we got oh, one. Okay. As long as one. Sorry. Thanks, Paul. You're good. Paul. Thank you. Yeah. Again. Yeah. Yeah, we, would, we will try to keep it within those parameters. Gotcha. Make a motion to approve subject to recommendations. All right. There's been a motion. Is there a second? Second. It's always a good idea for more education. And Kim? I, I have a com comment. So Pepsi or Coke comes to you and says, we're going to give you a better deal if you put our advertisements up on the board? Well, we're already under the understanding that we really can't do that. Um, again. But that'd be sponsorship and you. Right, right. Um, if there were any individual questions, I guess I would call Steve and work directly with him and, and ask him if there's any limitations. Oh, is, is this within the limitations? But I understand that it, it can't be uh, advertisement such as like, Bob's plumbing, and that can't stay up there all the time. That's what I've basically have been told. Okay. Can't be permanent. Another question is, what does the back side of it look like? It's it's just a, a aluminum. Did I miss it? There, it's unlit. There's no lighting on the back side. Uh, it's very similar to what's there today. It's literally just an aluminum no. oh, galvanized, yeah. or um, it's not galvanized, but um, uh, anodized material. Okay, just thinking to the future, I, I think at some point in time, what urban school might come down, there might be turning into oh, other things. Way. What does it look like from the other side? Because now those neighbors can see it mm -hmm. yeah, from this, North Avenue. Uh, it's it's just an aluminum okay. color. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Steve? Yeah, I can address some of the uh, comments and concerns. So one, uh, one of the conditions that you have before you is number four that states the electronic message center shall be uh, for North High School events only, no off-premise business advertising is permitted on the Electronic Message Center. So the thought process there is that, hey, if there's some type of event that someone's helping out to sponsor, yet it's a school event, you know, I've talked to Mr. Vollmer a little bit saying, I think at something like that, a, a, a tag could be put on there if it was, say, um, Acuity or, or, you know, whoever's sponsoring their Red Raider, um, uh, uh, McK what is it? There are the North Ra the gym, or the, uh, oh, uh, what are the mechanics? The Red Raider? The Red yeah, yeah the manufacturing, manufacturing, you know, the the the, uh, the whole uh, where we allowed for, I think it was Kohler and some other businesses. Mm -hmm. They, yeah, they they received um, a variance for that signage, so they would need to come back if there was going to be any sort of sponsor on the sign. I think we did that with the A's as well. Um, so so that would be something I could work with the school district as far as the back of the um, uh, sign. It is just a typical sign right now that is looking towards um, urban. Could that change down the road? I, if, if that does, I'm sure the school district would take a look at that at, you know, side sure. of it as well at that sure. point in time. Sure. At that time, if they wanted to put something on some, I'm just saying um, urban urban field high. on the back side or something simple, if that would be more appealing than just an aluminum sign sitting out in the middle there, right. I mean, I'd be very open to that. Are there any neighbors in the audience wishing to speak on this item? All right. I guess my only objection was that um, in the picture that the uh, that the Raiders were above the Red Wings, but uh, I'm sure that will will rectify that in the future. So, sure. Um, all right. There was a motion. There was a second. All those uh, in favor of approval, please state aye. aye. Any objection? Chair votes aye. That is approved. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay, next, application for conditional use with exceptions by Kathleen and Scott uh, Labonte to operate Sheboygan Pay It Forward at 933 Michigan Avenue. Steve? All right, Kathleen and Scott Labonte are here, and they're looking to operate Sheboygan Pay It Forward at 933 Michigan Avenue. This is a vacant tenant spot. Probably um, maybe some people might recognize Ricky's Tavern is on the corner. This is the same building. There's apartments on the second floor, and it's the... Um, tenant space in the picture that was previously a CBD shop. So basically what they're looking to do is uh, operate paid forward from 933 Michigan as their office and day center for peers experiencing homelessness and those at high risk of homelessness. 
Um, the Sheboygan Pay It Forward plans to provide a non-faith-based warm safe space for peers experiencing homelessness to have accesses to resources and bathrooms. Um, they're working consistently with their clients and peers on habit change, budgeting, goal setting, and steps involved to reach those goals. Employment goals include resume work, interview work, finding prospective employers who are willing to work with their clientele. The space will be a calm, sober, family-friendly environment for everyone to feel safe. They plan on being open seven days per week from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. from November 1st through April 30th. Um, and then 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Sunday, Monday, uh, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday from May 1st through October 31st. The floor plan is one main open room, which allows them to have their desk and office space right up to the front, along with tables and chairs uh, for their clients and groups. They would be able to sit and have coffee or snacks, play games, do artwork and journal work. There will be locker space and a coffee bar. Um, back section of the main room will have comfortable seating TV area for those in need of uh, that space. There's a doorway in the back of the main room that leads to a small room that will be used for daily supplies, storage, and emergency necessities. Back door is open for, to a small fenced-in yard area that would allow clients in need of a cigarette break, a private space to do without being on the main street. Um, they will not have a kitchen and they're hoping that Community Cafe provides lunches six days per week, and that's where they will suggest that uh, the individuals have their afternoon meals. They may provide an afternoon meal on Sundays from 12 to 2 since there is no community op meal offered on Sundays. The day center and offices will be calm, family-friendly, sober environment. Disruptive behavior and disrespect for our facility or surrounding businesses would not be tolerated or neither will be lighter in on the street. The capacity is approximately for uh, 20 to 25 people. There's a lit sign on the front of the building where they might look to add some addition to their logo on there. Um, other than that, as far as uh, uh, just some general staff comments, it um, doesn't appear that there's any dumpster for the uh, um, uh, tavern at this point in time. So if there was to be any uh, dumpsters, those would need to be screened and enclosed. They would just work with the building inspection department to um, uh, get the required building permits and occupancy, and uh, they would just obtain the necessary sign permits. So I can answer any questions, and the applicants are here as well. Any additional comments or thoughts? There is dumpsters for the tavern in the enclosed area okay. on the side of the building. Sounds they are good. there. On the east side uh, along Michigan? Yes. Okay. Yes. Questions from commission members? I, I guess I, I have a question. So, so I, <laughs> what, what kind of caught me a little bit, and I'm sorry for, for the chuckle, but in Steve's comment, it said sober living facility. This is on. No, it's a sober, family friendly environment. It is not a living facility. Yeah, so, but I mean, so the word I got caught up on was sober facility, but this is right next to Vreeke's on Michigan Avenue. Correct. Okay. Is, I just. But if they're in Vreeke's drinking, then they're not able to come into our facility. Okay. What just, they do the evening before or afterwards when they leave is their discretion, they're adults, but when they come to our facility during the day no. to be there, they need to be sober when they come in. Okay. Jerry? Yeah, I, I had the same thought, but it, considering the hours, you're out of there by the time the bar starts rolling. Correct. So you're not, you don't have concurrent hours. Hopefully, as you said, you have people who want to be there during the day. I would say, the, the yes, focus, the so. clientele that we work with will, be there because they want to work on improving their lives and we are able to help with that, with the programs that we offer. I'm sure we will have some that will weed their way through and realize that they don't just get to come in and sleep on a chair in the back of the room all day. They need to participate and be actively working to improve their lives with our help and guidance. Great. Thank you. So just kind of want to building build up on kind of my previous questions. How how did you choose this location specifically? Um, we have actually been searching for quite a while for a location in the downtown area that is walkable. A lot of our clients um, are at the warming center. 
they hang out downtown on 8th Street by the library, which I'm sure most of you are aware. They go to the community cafe, and this space was something that came up in conversation, and it's within that walkable distance, that it's easily serviceable for our clients, and honestly, we couldn't beat the price because the landlord was amazing. Just, just where my mind is, I love the concept and I love what you're doing, and I think that this is a this tremendously important service for the community. Mm -hmm. I am struggling just with the location being right next to Two Freakies on Michigan Avenue. Um, so, was there any? Directly next door to Black Pig. Yeah. There, there there's, is. I would say, there's one directly across the street that works with the people just getting out of jail. Mm -hmm. and, and there is a definitive break between Freakies and our entrance. There's a hallway going to the residence upstairs. Okay. Yeah, there's a, it's very distinguishable. There's no, like, they're not gonna go in Freakies door thinking they're coming in ours. There is separation between okay. the two. Chad? Is Sheboygan Paid Forward Inc. a for-profit or a not-for-profit? We are a nonprofit. We are a charitable nonprofit right now. And we are in the process of filing for our 501c3. Okay. That should be done by the 8th. Okay. Are there questions? Motions? Move to approve, subject to staff recommendations. Second. Thank you. Motion second, final thoughts. Are there any neighbors here to speak on this item? All right, all those in favor, state aye. Wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. oh, sorry. Yep. Just want to state your name. Uh, Jared Soto, uh, North 7th Street. It was a little far off, but not too far off. You mentioned your concern about it being really close to Vrikis. To be honest, in any small Wisconsin town, including Sheboygan, it's going to be hard finding a location that's far away from any sort of tavern or bar. Uh, when I moved to Sheboygan, I was living in my car. Now I make over $31 an hour. I think this is a great idea. Talking to homeless people here, I think at nighttime, when they aren't at the shelters, the only thing that there is open is the taverns. And I think that's a big problem. Uh, so I don't think the tavern is actually that big of a problem. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Sounds good. All those in favor of approval, please state aye. 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 Any objection, chair votes aye. That item is approved, thank you. All right, next item, application for conditional use permit with exceptions by um, Kamlish Baramata hat, if I'm pronouncing that correctly, I apologize, mm -hmm. uh, to remodel the existing vacant car wash section of the building and additional dining space at BP Service Station located at 905 Erie Avenue. Steve? All right, thanks, Mayor. So we're taking a look at the BP Service Station at 905 Erie Avenue. Presently, there is an old car wash facility on the west side of the site that is ha hasn't been um, working for many years and so the owner of the property is interested in developing a new small restaurant, calf Indian restaurant out of this space. Um, the existing building orientation, the fuel canopy and site lighting are pretty much staying all the same. The goal of the project is to convert the abandoned car wash into an Indian restaurant, which is approximately about 1,160 square feet. Um, there will be some minor renovations to the exterior of the building where you can see the um, old garage door um, that will be converted into a new commercial style um, uh, restaurant uh, door, aluminum frame door with side lights. There would be some uh, uh, windows, small punched windows on the east and west sides of the facility. Um, and so they're doing, there's no additions planned, but the interior would be redone to allow for dining space. That dining space would allow for approximately up to uh, 25 people. Uh, the dining is in the front, the back of the house is kitchen, the prep area, dishwashing. Um, exterior of the building would be improved, like I said, uh, removing some of the equipment on the roof. There's a lot of roof equipment that's not being used. They'd replace that entrance door add some small windows, uh, let's see here. They will be relocating the dumpster, which is presently located on the west side of the, um, uh, the west side of the cafe. So that would be moved to the rear of the facility. 
this restaurant will be a fast food casual dining restaurant where most of the orders will be to go or delivery, but can seat um, 10 to 14. It'll focus on authentic Indian dishes in hopes of diversifying the flavors of Sheboygan. Costs will be kept low, uh, training all seven food prep and serving staff, and they expect uh, that this is a good location, and that's why they're interested in um, uh, creating the cafe. A um, couple of app, uh, things that the plan commission may want the applicant to address is just what their thoughts on are as far as materials for the dumpster. Um, applicant gave some examples of signage, but no formal sign package has been um, formalized yet or introduced. Um, applicant indicates that there would be new exhaust vents and kitchen hoods, so we're looking for those to go out the top of the roof instead of on the sides, and there's quite a bit of mechanicals, like I said, on the rooftop, then we're asking for the um, rooftop units that are no longer in use to be removed, and those, if any, that are added any high, those mechanicals would need to be screened. May want to ask the applicant to see if they're selling alcohol as part of the restaurant. A couple of site issues. Um, there's uh, quite a few temporary cigarette signage on some of the pipe bollards in front of the convenience store. Um, there's some temporary signage, cigarette signs on the windows of the store. There's some si uh, temporary signage on light poles and by the monument signs. So we're asking that all of that temporary signage is removed. There's some stone and gravel by the car wash uh, adjacent to the residential property to the west that needs to be removed. There's some graffiti and a missing guardrail on the back of the facility that need to be addressed. And uh, just some uh, asked to do a little bit better uh, landscaping at that monument sign on that visible corner of 9th and Erie where pretty much everyone coming downtown is going by. So other than that, staff was recommending approval of the proposal and I can't answer any questions. The applicants are here. I don't know if there's any neighbors here for this one. Applicant, any additional comments? You know, Steve does a great job, and we're just kind of here to answer some questions for you. Cool. I'm Jeff Peterson, CR Structures, and Cam, the owner's over here uh, of the BP station. So. Questions from commission members? Ryan? One of the questions that Steve had is for, for the dumpster, what kind of materials are you going to use to construct that? We'll be moving the dumpster from the front of the building to the back, to the back of the building, and we'll have we'll a new slab, and we'll have the enclosed dumpster. Um, we have nice fencing, so you won't be able to see it. We'll be hidden in the back for you. So that would be that private decorative slatting private with the decorative. fencing. Mm -hmm. Exactly, yes. Thank you, Mayor. A uh, question for you on ingress and egress there. Coming off of that, you know, you're coming off of Erie, where there's a lot of traffic into that quick right turn. I see the parking behind the car wash. Getting back there on a night like last week, you know, where we had snow, how are you going to get people in and out of there uh, in, in that tight area on the corner? If it's a drive it through, you know, come in, grab your food and go, it's hard to get in and out of there as it is. Correct. Um, what we're proposing is it's not going to be a drive through. It'll be where they actually come in and pick up, grab and go. Mm -hmm. So at the back of the building right now, there's not going to be any parking at all. Mm -hmm. It'll just be up in the front of the parking lot. Okay. Um, over in that area. Okay. Kim? Thank you, Mayor. When I'm thinking about this area, I work downtown over and over again. I see accidents happen in that whole area on both sides of that corner of the southwest corner on Ninth Street and on Erie Avenue. There are a lot of accidents. It has a lot to do with what's going on at that BP station. So if you're doing a grab and go, are you also envisioning people to use the alley that's behind the grab and go? Or I'm sorry, behind the gas station? I'm not envisioning to use that back there. This is the current entrance that we plan on using. Yeah, there'd be nothing to prevent them from using it, and, and hopefully if people are dining, people will use it um, instead of going in the front. So so, um, so I, I guess I can't speak on behalf of the applicant, but I can say there's a parking lot there, and it w I would imagine it would be utilized for those who would actually sit in the restaurant. Paul, Kim? I see it being 
rather tight, and I don't know that that whole alley idea is good because I don't think it's set up for success right now, that alley area. Yeah, I, I don't necessarily disagree with you, but the parking lot's there, and it has access to the alley, and I think we'd rather have people coming in and parking in that alley than in the front of the uh, convenience store where you're concerned about the intersection, where you're going to have more mm -hmm. activity and movement compared to the alley, which is coming in the central blocks of 9th and 10th Street, which may be actually better. Okay. Thank you. We'll, we'll do our due diligence and look at that closely as well for you. Yeah, I think that's the ongoing question at that corner that's been there for years is people coming out of there are trying to go left. Mm -hmm. uh, on West on Erie just doesn't work. And, but you have people try that dash across the road all the time, and it ends up poorly. They also shortcut from Erie Avenue, cross the gas station lot, and shoot out onto 9th, heading south. So anything you can do to mitigate that would be okay. greatly appreciated. Definitely. There, uh, are there any neighbors for this item? Are there any motions for this item? I'll make a motion to approve subject to staff recommendations. From a car wash to Indian food was a real good idea, mm. and we cannot legislate pools not to be pools. I'll second. Okay. Keep in a motion second. Mm. All those in favor of approval, please state aye. 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 Any objections? Chair votes aye. That item is approved. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. All right. Next oh, item for idea. item number eight, application for conditional use permit with exceptions by Michael Thomas to operate Midwest Boxing and Beauty Art Dance University in a multi-tenant facility located at 1224 Wheaton Creek. Steve? Yeah, Michael Thomas is here, and he's taken a look at um, operating Midwest Boxing Champions and Beauty Art and Dance from, um, it is now the Hmong Cultural Service Center, which used to be the former Sunnyside Mall on uh, South 12th Street and Whedon Creek Road. Um, there are several vacant tenant spaces within the complex, and Mr. Thomas is working with the owner to uh, have the uh, boxing champions and beauty art dance studio in there. Uh, uh, the Midwest Boxing Champions will be a boxing club that looks to be a place where people of all ages can exercise through the sport of boxing. No one that signs up will be required to actually box anyone. They can use exercise equipment or do shadow boxing. Many people may learn to box and never actually compete. And um, Midwest Boxing Champion hopes to become a club that competes at an amateur level in time. And with experienced coaches and applying to become a sanctioned gym, the goal is to one day be able to spar against other sanctioned gyms. Um, also taking a look at the uh, um, Beauty Art and Dance University, which is going to be a dance company. Obviously, that the main objective there is to teach a variety of dance, and it gives an opportunity for youth of the city to have an outlet to do what they love and have an outlet to express themselves. And eventually, it may have the possibility of expanding and teaching art through the drawing on canvas. So uh, it, it appears to, that this is a good use for these vacant tenant spots, and staff is recommending approval of the proposal. Does the applicant have any additional comments to add? Yeah. Questions from commission members? Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve subject to recommendations. Second. Motion second. Are there any neighbors here? All right. It's awesome seeing Sunnyside Mall. I'm getting a little love down there, so appreciate it. All those in favor of approval, please state aye. Aye. Any objection? Chair votes aye. That item is approved. All right. Next, general ordinance number 2722-23 by Elder Persons Mitchell, amending section 15207 of the City Zoning Ordinance's Nonconforming Use Regulation section 15.934, Zoning Board of Appeals, so as to streamline and expedite the process of reviewing nonconforming use applications. Steve? Thanks, Mayor. So basically right now, um, the reason for the change is the nonconforming uses you know, oftentimes you're thinking of those as grandfathered uses, whether it's a, a tavern in a residential zone that has been there and it's considered non-conforming, uh, legal non-conforming, legal because it's there, but non-conforming because you wouldn't be able to construct it today. 
present and and so anytime anyone wants to choose those or, or change the use of those there's uh, a section in the zoning ordinance that allows for an applicant to change a non-conforming use to another one provide it a, a similar use it doesn't create any more issues or uh, issues of concern board of appeals tends to deal with building setbacks or additions and different variances that way and its staffs thought that the plan commission is dealing with uses and the issues with the uses every meeting. So the thought process was the plan commission is just more familiar with that. And not only that, plan commission meets twice a month compared to the board of appeals that meets once a month. And so the thought was it's, it can be done, we thought more effectively and efficiently at the plan commission. So that's why staff was recommending approval of the ordinance amendment you have before you. Right. Questions from board members? Hmm. Motions? Move to approve. To approve. Good idea. Second. Motion second. Final thoughts? All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any objection? Chair votes aye. That item is approved. All right. We'll take items number 10 and 11 together. Is 12 located on that so one too? Good. We have one staff report that covers all of the items from um, 10 through 10 14, through 15, 16, 18. 18. All right, we'll do one staff report together and we'll go from there. <laughs> Thank you. So this afternoon, uh, the freighter team is here as well as the Ryan companies and the matter development team. Um, so Freighter is proposing to amend the comprehensive plan and the rezone map. Um, this is a parcel of land that uh, they will be purchasing from the Sheboygan Area School District. It's a 25 acre vacant site on the northeast corner of Taylor Drive and Salmon Avenue. Uh, Freighter intends to subdivide this site into two proposed development projects. The first project being a new healthcare facility containing a neighborhood hospital surgery center and medical clinic space. And the second development is a new senior housing development, um, including multiple housing options for seniors. Um, the applicant states in their application that uh, it would benefit the Sheboygan uh, community in many ways, um, including without limitation to bringing home a group of local physicians that are currently practicing out of the Sheboygan market. Uh, centralizes a range of healthcare services in a community-focused modern medical facility delivering patient care closer to home. Adds a new healthcare option to Sheboygan through Freighter's academic-based approach to medicine. Addresses local need for the senior housing um, as indicated by the city's recent adoption of the affordable housing study. And then uh, as aging residents in the community move into the new senior housing, they will vacate single families that young families can move into. Uh, the freighter team has hosted an open house as of January 18th of 2023. Um, there was some comments with some common themes that were identified as part of that uh, to provide the appropriate buffering between the proposed project and the adjacent residential homes. Um, and the zoning code uh, specifies that a buffer yard requirements will need to be incorporated into the site plan. Preserve as much of the wooded area and the wildlife habitat as possible. A significant portion of the wooded area on the site is not slated for development and will be preserved. And then during construction, be thoughtful about disturbing, uh, disruption to the neighbors and accountable for the concerns and, and addressing them in a timely fashion. Uh, so what's happening today is there's, there actually, it's one parcel today. They're gonna create it into three new parcels. Um, so there's three documents related to uh, the comprehensive plan um, changes to make them consistent to the new developments. So there's a public uh, parks and open space uh, designation currently on the three parcels. Uh, under the plan, it would create th three new parcels out of one parcel. Uh, lot one would be uh, changed from open space to multifamily residential, as well as lot three which would be changed from open space to multifamily. And then lot two where the clinic would be located would be changed from open space to institutional and community facilities. And then the other documents uh, before you are related to a rezone. 
um, the property. So the property today as one parcel is zoned as suburban residential five. Uh, both lots one and three will be rezoned into urban residential 12 to accommodate the senior housing development. And then lot two on the southwest corner of the parcel will be um, rezoned into suburban office uh, to allow freighter to build the neighborhood hospital. So there's a number of um, items identified as key initiatives in the comprehensive plan that this uh, addresses uh, things like infill development and redevelopment, spurring economic development and creation, strengthening older neighborhoods, and diversifying the city's housing stock. So this, the surrounding zoning to the neighborhood, um, the properties to the north and east of this are zoned suburban residential five. The properties to the west are SR5 and urban residential 12. And then the properties to the south are suburban residential and suburban office, particularly where um, the St. Nick's complex is. Uh, it's important for the Planning Commission to understand that if the property zoning designation is changed from suburban residential five to suburban office and urban residential 12, an applicant could apply uh, for converting, uh, for a conditional use permit to uh, develop these parcels. Um, if the Common Council approves the rezone, the applicant needs to be aware that a conditional use needs to be submitted and reviewed by the Planning Commission. Um, and then in addition, the applicant is proposing to amend the comprehensive plan, as I stated, and the rezone. So there is one objection. Uh, Steve identified that. That uh, letter is in your packet. Um, I believe there's some neighbors here, but the staff is recommending approval of the three comprehensive plan amendments as well as the three rezone requests. So I know the applicant has some slides, four slides they would like to review with the commission and the public, so I would recommend turning the floor over to them. All right, applicants, come on down, introduce yourself. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name's Eric Nordine. I work for a company called Ryan Companies. We're a real estate development and construction company. We've done about 15 projects for Freighter over the years, and i um, excited to deliver a nice, another nice project for, for them here in Sheboygan. Uh, I was, my opening remarks were really gonna be to lay out a lot of the things Chad just said, so I won't repeat a lot of that. Um, I'll stick around for Q&A with the team. We have a couple other team members that I'd like to introduce that they'll share uh, a little more about the project. Um, I guess the only comments I would, would add are, um, when we look at the pattern of land use around the site, when we think about that Taylor Drive commercial and medical corridor, to us it does feel consistent uh, with that use as, as we head from south to north on Taylor uh, as far as the proposed uh, healthcare facility. And then we like the idea of the senior living piece as a good transitional use from the healthcare facility to the surrounding single family uh, uses to the north and to the east. So. Uh, with that, I guess, why don't I introduce Ryan Marks from Freighter? He might want to share a little bit about uh, the proposed Freighter piece and then Aaron Matter on the, uh, on the senior housing, have a few remarks, but mostly we're happy to be here for a Q&A and answer any questions of the commission or the community. Thank you. Hello everyone, thanks for the, the time today. I'm Ryan Marks, uh, Vice President of Facility Planning and Development for Freighter in the Medical College of Wisconsin. Uh, again, appreciate all the detail to our project, but um, maybe just a little bit more about what we're planning to do. You know, we're really hoping to provide a leading academic medical complex uh, for the Sheboygan area here that is very compact, and, but very accessible um, and easy to navigate in and out when you are in a typically distressed situation with your health. Um, this type of facility can provide 85% of your healthcare needs. With the neighborhood hospital, it provides eight ED uh, beds and eight inpatient beds. So if you're coming uh, for an urgent uh, situation, they can uh, diagnose you there and either release you back home or we can keep you overnight for observation and have people come and visit you in a very accessible format. Um, the other component to this is um, a day surgery, ambulatory surgery where we would take care of all your outpatient surgery needs and GI procedures, which um, there are a lot of those, of course. Um, there's a lot of ancillary services here, so all your lab work, all your pharmacy, uh, all your imaging needs can be done in this facility. And the final component is a little bit more of your traditional medical office space, 
that will be mostly focused on specialty care um, with a number of different specialties. And that will be held on the kind of larger um, square rectangle building that you see on the south with the north piece being the neighborhood hospital component. Um, we of course are really excited to bring back to market uh, a number of physicians and providers that are currently working outside of the market. So this is all just a process to get them back home and seating their patients um, at home here, which we're excited about. Uh, we also think this is a, a great location. Um, it makes sense from a rezoning perspective with um, the pattern of development. Um, but of course, we really felt like we needed our senior living partner uh, to be a part of this as well, to intertwine and, and work together uh, to both buffer the neighborhood, but uh, provide a full health and wellness uh, and, and a really important corner uh, in Sheboygan. So I have to, I'll stick around for questions, of course, but Aaron, if you would like to say anything about uh, your components of the project. Scott, can you go ahead to the other slides? Good afternoon, my name is Aaron Matter of uh, Matter Development. My company is a developer, owner, and operator of senior housing communities. We're proposing senior housing on the site, lots one and three. Um, for many of the reasons that Ryan mentioned for why Freighter believes that this is a good location and a good use for the site, we believe the same. Uh, we believe that there is a need for senior housing and together with uh, our local project partner, Paul Weaver, I believe is a known entity in Sheboygan, uh, we've been looking for opportunities and working with staff uh, to find opportunities in Sheboygan for senior housing community. Um, we're proposing a full continuum of care on the campus, independent living, assisted living, and memory care. Um, there's an image on the screen of a uh, general uh, perspective of um, what we believe the project might look like. Uh, but from a use standpoint, we believe um, that it is uh, really perfectly situated for a senior housing use for many different reasons, for the purposes of the residents that will live there and then also their families. Um, not just uh, our uh, partner in, in Freydert um, being directly next door and providing medical services to the prospective residents, but then also for their families in close proximity to retail, to shopping, and to restaurants. Um, as Chad mentioned, um, this, this type of senior housing really uh, serves dual purposes in the community. It offers uh, the ability for seniors that have been in the community for a very long time, the ability to stay there. And then it also opens up those single family homes that may no longer be appropriate for those residents to live in any longer uh, to uh, be possible for them to open those up for new families that uh, the housing may be more appropriate for. The one thing that I wanted to uh, point out on the site plan um, is just as the site uh, on lot three abuts uh, single family residential. Um, we understand that and we're trying to be very sensitive to that. And so the site plan is configured in a way that allows for uh, the lowest density portion of the site. Um, and what you kind of see depicted there are ranch homes um, along that lot line. That's uh, our nod to an understanding of the sensitive transition between and a more the, the more dense uh, medical and, and larger building uh, to the single family residential uh, directly adjacent. Um, those are my comments. All right, thank you. Anyone else from the applicant team? Any neighbors here wishing to speak? All right, just wanna come on up. State your name. My name is uh, Vince Corbel. Uh, I'm here with my wife, Michaeline. And we currently reside at uh, 1804 North 29th Street. That's on the intersection of Salmon Avenue and 29th. The senior development will be right in back of us. Now, if you all asked me, am I in favor of this project? I'd be crazy if I told you yes. Because one of the reasons we purchased the house that we did was because what was in back of us. Uh, the wildlife that's back there and what we've enjoyed in the past, uh, we would prefer to keep it that way. But if things are going to change, I would prefer that they change with uh, some appreciation of what we're going to have to take a look at. I'm concerned about the changing in the zoning. Right now that whole area is zoned single family. Now, as far as freighter goes, uh, if they wanna build their hospital where it's at, I don't care if that area is changed. 
but I would prefer that the area, I think it's zone three behind us. I don't see it up there. But anyway, zone three behind us. I would prefer that the, the rezoning of that would be held off until the council uh, approved the final drawings as far as what was going to be built there. They just showed on their slide projections for the senior living a four-story building. Well, I don't want to look at a four-story building behind me. There's duplexes that are going to go on a cul-de-sac, but there's two buildings there that are eventually, according to what I've seen here, are going to be four stories right there. That's four stories high. I don't want that in the back of my house. If you want to knock it down to two stories, I'd be more than happy to take a look at it. But once you change the zoning, they can build whatever they want. And this is what I'm concerned about, that once the zoning is changed, we went through this whole thing with Purveya a couple years ago, and we went through two years of hell with them building that building. They made a lot of promises to us. They wined and dined us and patted us on the back, and we went through pure hell. They broke every city ordinance that they could, and nobody stood by the neighbors that put up with that building. And I don't want to go through the same thing with Freighter. I First of all, I question why Freighter wants to build another hospital. We have two trauma four hospitals now that can't even take care of a cardiac patient in Sheboygan. I don't know what the trauma situation is for Freighter for this building, but all of Sheboygan only has two cardiologists, Louis Kuhls and George Cudicat. There is no, no cardiologists at Purveya and no cardiologists at St. Nicholas. So what is Freighter going to provide us over there. I can understand the senior living. We need more uh, facilities for senior living. Duplexes to me would be perfect, but not four-story buildings. So what I'm asking is if the council would hold off on rezoning that portion, lot three or D division three, until they do the final approval of what's going to be built over there because they can come up here and say, well, we're only gonna build uh, duplex homes there and end up with a five-story complex because the zoning, once you change it, that zoning allows it. And that's my biggest concern of what's gonna go back there. Now, as far as I'm concerned, Freighter did a great job with communicating with the neighbors. We've had two meetings. They went over a lot of plans. They explained a lot. They asked us about all the complications that we ran into with the, uh, uh, with the Purveya project. And they said that they would, uh, they would be more than happy to uh, review the ordinances of the city so that they don't break them like Purveya did. Purveya was starting the project at 5.30 in the morning and nobody cared. The police didn't care, the city didn't care and you couldn't get in touch with anything at Purveya because they told us that, well, if you have any complaints, you either submit it by an email or you, you submit it in writing. We don't take a complaint over the phone. And once we submitted the emails and it in writing, we never heard from anybody. And this is the things that I'm concerned about. And it's also, what are we gonna run into after the project is completed? And that's, we had a chance to talk with Purveya, or I mean with Freighter, and they agreed on a lot of things. The snow removal, the nighttime lighting, when dumpsters are gonna be dumped. Purveya has their dumpsters picked up at 4.30 in the morning. And the thing is, it doesn't affect the people that are approving this because you don't live around there. You're not a neighbor of what goes on over there. And this is why I hope that there's a working relationship between not only the builder, but also with the neighbors. And I hope that everybody takes that into consideration. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Just to address a few of the comments, the four story building that you're referring to is, if you can put that back up, Scott, is actually on the north west corner of, no, 
go to the site plan, please? Well, that, that'll work. Um, so can you go to the other site plan? So the four-story building is on lot one on the corner of Geely and Salmon. Okay. The units that are on lot three, which front you are the single-story um, duplex type units that will be similar to the housing stock that you currently have. What are, what's the height on the uh, two blue buildings? Because those are supposed Do to be uh, apartments. Is the applicant? Yes, those uh, are shown currently to be three-story buildings. The way that they're configured is parking on the first floor and then two stories of residential above. We'd be flexible with whether or not those end up being in the site plan overall. So if I can address the other gentleman's comment about holding off on rezoning lot three bef and waiting till we get a development plan, we can't do that because the zone they can't submit a, a conditional use plan for the planning commission to consider until the zoning allows for this type of work to happen. So that's why the zoning has to frankly come, the rezone has to come first before the development plan can be approved. Does the applicant have any other comments in response? Uh, yeah, just from a process standpoint, I, I just wanted to reiterate what Chad is saying that the uh, the conditional use process, the, that approval process is a much more detailed application and we've withheld a certain amount of design work pending the first step of the entitlement process here with the rezone. So the idea is to get the rezoning in place, then go do some more work, come to the planning staff. Um, the, the burden of detail on the submittal for the conditional use is, is much more involved from an operational standpoint. It'll address a lot of the the community concerns that have been raised. So I think we're, these are all valid questions and concerns, but as we sit here today, we're, we're, we're just at step one of a multi-step process that needs to kind of have this linear approach to it. So we're asking for approval of the zoning, knowing that we can't do our project without the conditional use approval, which would be forthcoming. Thank you. I mean, just maybe on the softer side of things, you know, Freighter takes its reputation very seriously and when we, enter a new community, we really want to be a, a partner with that community and with the residents of that community because that's who we're trying to take care of. And so uh, we would do ourselves no favor uh, by coming in here and, and pushing people around or not doing what we're saying we're going to do once we get here. Um, we have a small uh, medical office space on Taylor Drive currently. Um, the only way we can bring more uh, leading physicians here like cardiologists is to develop more space for them to come to. So. Uh, step one is to get projects approved, which allows us to do more recruiting. It also allows us to bring more positions into this market that aren't here currently. Um, and we want to be a, a really good community partner. So I uh, would look forward to the rezoning. Thank you. If you just want to introduce yourself, sir. I will. My name is Steve Rasmussen. I live at 1812 North 29th Street right next to the Corbells, sandwich between the Sokolowskis and the Corbells. So um, I want to echo a lot of the same comments. Um, first and foremost, I said this the other night when my wife and I were talking about this again, the folks from Freighter and Ryan have been incredible. Several of these people we spent a lot of time talking with and they were far more respectable and you know, listening to our concerns than anybody up until this point in time. So I really don't have any issues with them. Um, what we're fearful of is just losing the green space. That's, you know, some of our biggest things. Um, like Vince had mentioned, the hospital in the morning, sometimes it's even three o'clock in the morning, bang, 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 you hear the plow is going. You know, I feel sad for him because he's retired and he gets sleep all day. For me, it's like my alarm clock goes off at 3, 30, 4 o'clock in the morning, so it doesn't bother me. But when I get to retirement, I moved here 20 years ago, and what drew us here was this property. I was working down in Port Washington and we were looking at properties all the way into Milwaukee and Plymouth and Sheboygan and we settled on this property. We found it on our own and my family, my kids just love it. My wife isn't here today. She would be speaking up as well, but she had an emergency meeting at work. Uh, my kids stay in Sheboygan. They love Sheboygan. Um, they grew up with that property with all the wildlife and the animals and everything that you see. It, it's just gorgeous. This morning I woke up at 4.30 in the morning and I had deer sleeping underneath my tree in the backyard. You know, it's really just a beautiful parcel. And once that space is gone, it's gone forever. 
it's not gonna come back. Everybody says, or people can say that, you know, it will correct itself, it will change. No, you know, once you start putting parking lots down and pavement down and footings in the ground, it'll never be the same. It just never will. So like Vince echoed, you know, I would hope that you would turn it down. I, you know, I don't wanna try to derail their project, but at the end of the day, I gotta think of what's best for my wife, my family, you know, my kids, myself. And that's what brought us here to Sheboygan. We love Sheboygan, we absolutely love it. And I don't wanna be forced with the thought, you know, that I gotta look and move or go somewhere else, but if I have to, I will. You know, it's just facts are facts. And, you know, I will tell people, get out, you know. I got a big mouth and I'll use it, unfortunately. So that's the biggest thing my family has concerns of. Um, they mentioned bringing people into the area. I'm a supply chain manager with a big, working for a big furniture manufacturer out of Green Bay. We have a hard time finding any people. Our suppliers are having troubles finding people. They're trying to draw people in, saying that's the big pull. I, I don't see that drawing people in the Sheboygan, being so close to the freeway and the way people commute nowadays. I don't think that's gonna draw a lot of people in. I think it's just gonna create more traffic. Um, I can't tell you how many times I hear the brakes squeal and tires screeching and there's cars up in the neighbor's, you know, sidewalk and yard. Somebody almost hit their house last year, you know, just with all the extra traffic around. And I'm concerned about that. If my kids were little, I'd be looking to get out. I'd be fearful for their safety. I just really would. And that's what really drew us to this property. It, we felt it was safe years ago, so. Um, I guess that's a big thing I want to say is just, you know, we love Sheboygan. We love looking out our backyard. We have people that stop at our house and ask if they can walk into our backyard to watch the deer and the birds. And we're like, yeah, just go back there and take a look at it. You know, we don't care. You want a chair? You know, come and sit on a chair. There's people that park along the streets just to watch the wildlife. It's just, it's a beautiful parcel. And once we stick a shovel in the ground, once we start laying concrete and blacktop, it's, it's gonna be gone, it's gonna be gone forever. There's no replacing it. So maybe I'm a little more emotional about that because I grew up in the country and I had a lot of that. You appreciate it more. Um, in the city of Sheboygan, you don't find properties like that where it's quiet, you can see animals. We just love it when the sandhill cranes come in every year. You can hear them squawking at first. We were like, what is that? But just a beautiful, beautiful parcel. And I just would hate to see it not get destroyed, but you know, used in a manner that God didn't intend it to be used for. So um, that's all I have. Thank you. Um, any other neighbors wishing to speak? Any other neighbors? Final call. All right. Questions from commission members? Uh, Planning director. W I think, uh, I don't think we have to take individual votes on all of this when we get to the point. Maybe we can lump the three ge general ordinances together and the three ROs together, um, but it's up to the commission how you want to handle it. All right, thank you. Any, um, okay, we'll do Ryan and then Kim. Yeah, I just want I just want to address the neighbors' questions on traffic. That's one thing I was going to bring up, even if you didn't. Um, the developers are going to be going to have to do a traffic impact study, and if there's if there's any traffic controls or delays that need to be done, that that study will tell you that it'll be a very very detailed study, similar to that was done when the Aurora development was was looked at. So, is there going to be an increase in traffic? Yes, but you can minimize that if you do the correct um, traffic controls, rather than signal lights or stop signs or adding right hand turn lanes or left hand turn lanes. So. That'll, they'll, they'll have to submit a very detailed report that'll be, that'll be um, reviewed by, by city staff. And, and, and by yourselves, if you wish. Can, I ask a, can, you, can you come up to the, the mic? Yep, just so we can hear you. Okay. Will the uh, traffic survey that they're going to do, will that just be on Taylor Drive? Because since they built the new Purveyor building, the traffic on Salmon Avenue has tripled. And the amount of accidents on 29th and in the intersection of 29th and Salmon, uh, I have 911 on speed dial because I've had trucks in my backyard. I've had tires through my bushes and gardens. Uh, they've taken down the stop signs for the bus. They've taken down partial, par, partial portions of the tree on my neighbor across the street. That's how many accidents are on that intersection. And we've tried to get a four-way stop sign at that intersection for six years, and nobody listens to us. 
All I hear is, uh, well, the Department of Transportation has to approve it. They have to come out and do a survey. They have to clock the miles per hour that the cars are driving down Saman Avenue. And whenever they put a, uh, whenever they put a speed limit with that uh, electronic uh, calculator that tells you how fast you're going, the cars will start out at that intersection and see how fast they can go by the time they hit that, uh, that readout. So, and, and nothing has changed. We still have a two-way stop. We can't even get a sign on the bottom of the stop sign that says it's a two-way intersection. So you can do all the traffic surveys you want, but it's the end results that helps us. And I think right now, uh, they're going to need some type of a, a traffic signal uh, on 29th or on uh, Taylor and, uh, and Salmon. Uh, that's the only thing that's gonna slow traffic down around there for them to be able to get traffic in and out of this whole development. So that's, that's the situation. Thank you. Ryan, yeah. Yes, Taylor Drive will be looked at and Salmon, and one of the studies I'm sure will be is if a four-way stop is warranted at this intersection of 29th and Salmon. There's numbers you look for, pedestrians, accidents, the amount of traffic, all that will be looked at. The development like this, uh, the traffic engineering company, they can easily project what the traffic is going to be from 8 a.m. to 9 a.m. or from noon till 1. That's what that study will do. And it'll, it'll look at the intersection of uh, Taylor and uh, Salmon, what, what or if any needs to be, uh, any, any facilities need to, need to be added. It'll, okay. It'll, so. it'll, 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 it'll look at all that. I, I yeah. hope so. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Kim, did you got a question? Yes. Um, if, would you be able to put up the photo um, of the plan, the way it looks, so we can see it from the south looking north? Thank you. When I see the stormwater management pond straddling the two properties in the so two zones, does that service just your lots one, two, and three? Yes. Okay, so the stormwater uh, management pond that is in the north, or the northeast corner, if you will, or the, yeah, of that block, what does that currently get filled by? That that's a city uh, stormwater pond that handles the water. The surrounding neighborhoods all drain into that pond. All drain. But in. but there's new there's DNR requirements that they for developing this land that they need to comply with, and some of those require them to have on-site storage independent of the city storage. Right, after so much um, ground cover. So that lot three, where the um, senior housing, the we'll call it two-story senior housing is, what will go on in that land that is just shown as land yet? Will that be developed as park? Yeah, it would be left as is and current kind of um, preserved as it, as it sits today. Now, there may be a reason to look into um, some of the species of the of the trees and such that are there in a way that might be more favorable to clean that up a little bit. But the general idea is to, um, you know, to the extent we can preserve certain areas for green space and wildlife as they exist today, it's been it's something we've heard repeatedly from the community. So that's, that's part of the intent there. The other thing I would add, just so the commission understands, as we sit here today with the site plan, we have not gone through any of the uh, stormwater management, uh, site engineering work, collaborative with the city staff yet. That happens after this first uh, zoning approval process prior to the <coughs> submittal for the conditional use. And so what you see here today is a, a good reflection of how much volume of stormwater uh, retention, for example, as you see here, the shape and ex exact location of that pond could change a little bit. Um, this Some of the, some of the uh, feedback we get from city staff may drive us to consider other things like what do we do with that north part of lot three? Maybe there's some better use, uh, given that it's gonna be left undeveloped. Um, some of that is wetlands, so some of that has to be preserved as wetlands, uh, but exactly where that line is drawn and, and uh, how we handle some of the green space, we're certainly open to suggestions from both planning staff, the commission, the community, and so on. 
It just hasn't been fully vetted yet. And then the, the area in the center of the medical center and hospital, yes, it's green. Is that going to be green space? What, what is going to go on in that area? It looks like it's open from above, but it might not be. It, it actually is open above. It's intended to be a light well so that because there's some hospital beds that on the north part there that front along there and they wouldn't have a window line otherwise. So it's just a design element to allow more natural light into the facility. As the floor plate gets bigger, it's harder to get natural light deeper into the, into the plate. So it's just a design strategy. In terms of what's actually in there, I don't think we know yet. Um, some kind of landscaping or hardscaping, I don't think it's meant to be activated space per se. It's more just something to look at and bring natural light into the, into the facility. Okay, thank you. Sure. Additional questions, comments from commission members? Sure. Uh, neighbors? To kind of answer your question, um, the section number three, where the red line is on the east side, on my survey of the plot for my property, there's a 20-foot easement that has to be maintained and it's a 20-foot drainage easement. Because the, the uh, block pitches from south to north okay. down, 20 feet has to be, be, be maintained between all the house, the lot line of the house over to the west. 20 feet has to be maintained for drainage for that water to run down that area down into the retention area. And if you'd like to, I've got the survey here if you'd like to take a look at it. Okay, thank you. Other questions from commission members? So I just wanna make a comment on behalf of staff. So the, uh, the school district, as the commission may know or not know, has entertained options to develop this property. Um, they went out in an RFP received I think three or four proposals, one of them being this proposal. City staff has had the opportunity to work with the school district through this process. I think it's safe to say that the school board feels the need to um, sell this property versus keeping it um, as vacant property. Um, and so I think when you you know look at what this could be and, and the options that are out there, this the plan that's been laid out here with the senior housing and the freighter seem to be, from my opinion, the uh, least restrictive, uh, the least developed, and, and trying to preserve some of those uh, neighborhood and, and those natural fields that are in this property from what some of the other proposals were um, to densely plat this. We all know that we have a huge housing, housing shortage and this could be, um, you know, pretty, significant single family, um, 60 by 100 foot lots and plot this all out and go with it. So, you know, I think this is a, a plan that from a city staff perspective, I, I realize there's some concerns from the neighbors on the natural feel. So I, you know, I think that's something that frankly the school board needs to decide on, but at the same token, I think this is a plan that should have minimal impact to the surrounding neighborhoods. Thank you, Chad. Jerry? Mm -hmm. Thank you. Chad, could you walk through the process from here on out, um, assuming, uh, just uh, spitballing, if, if things are approved today, where does it go next? What's the timeline? And then I have a comment after. So it would refer back to the Common Council at their next meeting, which I think is March, Next Monday. First or Sixth. something? Sixth. Sixth, okay. And then it'll hold at the council meeting for 30 days so that the uh, city clerk can send notice to the surrounding neighbors. And then I wanna say maybe the first meeting in April, I'm throwing this out there, I don't know. Um, the council would take this up and have a public hearing where the neighborhood would be allowed to come in again and speak. And then um, the council would later on in the agenda either approve or deny this application. Once these applications, once that process is done, um, then it's up to the freighter team to come back with a um, the conditional use permit, site plans, elevations, all of that stuff. So 
that would be another public hearing at a later date uh, before this body before and then a meeting of the architecture review board and, and during that process pie in the sky conditional use is not approved can the property be changed back obviously through the same process to the current zoning if necessary yes there is a uh, clause in the general ordinance that would allow i believe the date was there is a date in the ordinance that if the project does not move forward it would revert back to the uh, uh, december 31st of 2024 so if the project does not move forward by that date the zoning would go back to the original zoning Great. And I think just based on the number of years I've worked on this commission, the problem is usually it's it's the what's in my backyard because I've had that issue with my backyard. Um, I've watched developments like Walmart and others right in the middle of neighborhoods. And the heartburn here, I think, is lot three. I think we all agree. Lot one and lot two seem to be whatever the reason is they want to build, we, we can't get into that, but lot one and two seem to be the properties that are least controversial. Lot three is where the heartburn lies because you've got nine homes there that have unfettered access through their backyard right now and we're talking about putting a hard line there with something. Now what that will be, we don't know. Uh, the, the developers will tell you from a monetary standpoint, we really can't get into this unless we have X amount of buildable space that gives us a line of revenue. Totally understand that. The issue becomes what, if any, types of homes we're putting on lot three, and to his point, how far away are they from our residences and how much buffering do we have? The beauty of this process is there are a lot of kicks at the can, I'm not gonna say the, the old term, uh, kicks at the can that we have along the way to pull the plug if we need to. And so they have to come back multiple times to get those things approved and we have more control as the process moves forward. Right now we're just looking at some, they're just putting something on a paper and saying here's what we think we might build, two stories, one story, we don't, we don't know until we get out there. It's like remodeling your home. You don't know until you tear the wall out. You know, what's there. From experience. Yes. <laughs> so I, I think at this point, we're just kind of shooting the breeze uh, and talking about potentially rezoning it. Here, we're just one step into the process. It's a critical step because you can't move forward unless, as you said, the rezone is approved. However, I think the neighbors bring up some significant concerns with Lot 3. What, what's that gonna look like? Because we aren't there. And nobody knows because we don't live there what goes on at four in the morning. They do, we don't. Um, so we don't wanna be additive to that problem by putting something else in their backyard that's a problem. But I think at this point, we're just progressing forward with the potential. And then it's on Freighter and the associated companies there to show that they're gonna be a responsible neighbor and move forward in a responsible way and preserve as much of that area as possible. We know eventually something will go there. I'd rather not, to be honest with you, have 100 single family homes over there, in, but that might be something down the road. This impact, the red homes, I think, less intrusive than the blue. Just from my perspective, I would have more heartburn with those two blue ones than I would the red, but that's something for us to discuss down the line. Thank you, Chair. Other questions from commission members? We're looking for motions. Brian? Um, I'll make a motion to approve items 9 through 18. I believe we're taking all of them. Is that correct? Yep. For the rezoning? Because our, uh, this this 10 project. Through, 10 through 18. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. 10 through 18. Okay. Because this project does, does follow. The Taylor Drive is a medical corridor, and this just follows that exactly. So that's why I got my support for it. All right. There's been a motion. Is there a second? I will second that. Motion second. Final deliberations. Mm -hmm. All those in favor of approving items 10 through 18, please state aye. 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 Any objections? Chair votes aye. Those items are approved. Thank you, everybody. Next item is, our next meeting is March 14th. Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Motion second. All those in favor, state aye. 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 Any objections? We're adjourned at 513.